in this module we are going to study a simple criteria for riemann integrability a consequence of this criteria is the fact that any continuous function will be riemann integrable in a later module we shall study the lebesgue integrability criteria that completely characterizes all riemann integrable functions so theorem let f from a b to r be a bounded function be a bounded function f is riemann integrable f is riemann integrable if and only if we can find we uh, if and only if for each for each epsilon greater than 0 we can find a partition partition p epsilon such that u f p epsilon minus l f p epsilon is less than epsilon the proof of this is very straightforward proof proof suppose f is riemann integrable we will first deal with that direction suppose f is riemann integrable integrable then that just means that infimum of ufp is equal to supremum of lfp that's the definition of a function being riemann integrable which just means that we can find partitions partitions p1 comma p2 such that u of fp1 minus l of fp2 is less than epsilon why is this the case well this infimum is equal to this supremum that means that there must be some quantity here and some quantity here that get arbitrarily closer and closer right so for this fixed epsilon we should be able to find a partition p1 such and a partition p2 such that ufp1 minus lfp2 is less than epsilon okay now it's easy to find a common refinement so ufp1 union p2 minus lfp1 union p2 is of course less than epsilon why because by going to the common refinement you are only going to decrease this quantity sorry you are only going to increase this quantity and decrease this quantity therefore the um, difference is only going to get lesser so you have ufp1 union p2 minus lfp1 union p2 is less than epsilon okay so this proves one direction conversely conversely assume 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 that that for each epsilon greater than 0 each epsilon greater than 0 we can find we can find p epsilon such that u f p epsilon minus l f p epsilon is less than epsilon then then it follows it follows immediately immediately that uf is equal to lf is equal to lf why is this the case well because 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 uf minus lf is always going to be less than or equal to uf p epsilon minus lf p epsilon right because this is this is the infimum of the quantities uf p epsilon and lf is the supremum of the quantities therefore uf minus lf will have to be less than or equal to uf p epsilon minus lf p epsilon and this is less than epsilon so what we have shown is uf and lf can be made epsilon close uh, hence by a theorem which we proved way back in week 1 or week 2 i think week 2 we are done okay so because uf minus lf is less than epsilon we are done we are done so this was a rather simple criteria in fact it just rephrases the fact that uf equal to lf in a slightly different language 
but this is very useful as can be seen in the next theorem can be seen in the next theorem any continuous function continuous function f from a b to r is riemann integrable is riemann integrable now here is a situation where we will not just use continuity we will use uniform continuity in the proof so first of all observe proof proof observe observe that f is bounded because it attains its maxima and minima it's going to be bounded we have already seen that the image has to be uh, also going to be a closed interval observe that f is bounded and uniformly continuous and uniformly continuous okay so what we are going to do is we are going to produce for each epsilon a partition p epsilon such that the previous criterion is satisfied so fix epsilon greater than 0 and choose choose delta greater than 0 as per the definition of uniform continuity this just means this just means as a recall this should be digested by you and flowing in your veins by now but just to recall if mod x minus y is less than delta x comma y coming from the closed interval ab then mod f of x minus fy is less than epsilon okay so we have now got this condition of uniform continuity that sort of says that the moment points are close enough to each other then the values are going to be close close to each other also now this will immediately show that uh, we can find a partition that we want let let p be any partition be any partition or rather let p epsilon be any partition such that each delta xk is less than epsilon ah uh, sorry less than delta that just means that consecutive points in this partition are less than delta distance away okay now what will this show well well let's compute uf p epsilon and lf p epsilon okay this is just going to be summation capital m k delta x k uh, here delta this x k looks like a subscript delta x k k running from 1 to n recall capital m k is the maximum and this is going to be k equal to 1 to n small m k delta x k now we have this what we are really interested in from the previous criterion is ufp epsilon minus lfp epsilon right and a moments calculation will tell you that this is summation k equals 1 to n mk minus small mk delta xk well that was easy enough well what do you know about capital mk minus small mk well this is a continuous function this is a f is a continuous function so consider f on x k comma x k minus 1 okay this is f on k my x k x k minus 1 attains attains its maxima and minima that means there are points in this interval x k x k minus 1 and uh such that f of that point is capital mk and another point in this interval xk xk minus 1 or rather i reverse the thing it's xk minus 1 xk sorry about that xk minus 1 xk there are points in this interval such that f of that point is capital mk and f of that other point is small mk we can find points here simply because this function is continuous and this is a compact set therefore f will attain its maxima and minima okay but that just forces by our by our choice 
choice of delta and the fact fact that xk minus xk minus 1 has to be less than delta because we chose the partition that way we must have we must have capital mk minus small mk is less than epsilon and the beauty of this fact is this is true for all k all k from 1 to n irrespective of the choice of k this is have to be this will have to be true that just means summation k equals 1 to n small mk i mean capital mk minus small mk delta xk this has got to be less than epsilon times summation k equals 1 to n delta xk and just thinking what this summation delta xk is you will be able to see that this is just epsilon times b minus a this is just epsilon times b minus a now what we have shown is given any epsilon we can find a partition p epsilon such that u f p epsilon minus l f p epsilon is less than epsilon times b minus a by k epsilon principle by k epsilon principle the previous criterion previous theorem theorem guarantees guarantees that f is integrable okay so this completes the proof the proof was an application of several properties of continuous functions please go through the proof carefully and see where you see where each property of continuous functions were applied to even begin the proof we had to use the fact that continuous functions on compact sets will have to be bounded we have defined integrals only for bounded functions this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on criterion for riemann integrability